Welcome back, Forts fans. You clicked on this video because you want to learn how to get better at vanilla forts. Well, you're in luck. I made this video pointing out some of the biggest mistakes that new players are making and giving you the seven golden rules that new players need to follow in order to become better at forts. This is part of a larger guide on Steam that a large group of us have decided to make to help new players learn and understand the game. There's a link down below in the description to the guide over on Steam. You guys can follow along there and check it out and learn more about the game. Here at Synergy Gaming TV, we do all sorts of gaming content and tutorials. If you're new here, consider subscribing, hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for the next tutorial video. You're watching Synergy Gaming TV. I'm your host, Synergy, and we'll see you guys in the video. All right, guys, as you can see, we're just here in a sandbox so that we can get through this golden seven rules without anyone attacking or harassing us. Golden rule number one is don't build more foundations than you need. How many times have you done this or seen people do this in a lobby? As soon as it starts, that little sound effect comes in, it zooms in on their base, and they grab the foundation, and they go straight across the bottom like this, okay? Do not do this, okay? You don't need to hide your minds. You don't need to try and pull some sneaky swarm stuff off. We can tell by the shape of your base if you're going for a swarm rush or not. Other than that, we know it's mines. There's no point in doing this and covering it up. And I'll explain to you why. There is an additional cost when you build a new foundation. And I'll show you, okay? So if we grab this strut here and we bring it to the ground, you'll see that there's two different costs, okay? On the right, you pay 11 metal and 57 energy. That's for the cost of the strut. But then you're also paying a cost of a new foundation or a node. So anytime that you connect to the ground or a sidewall or the ceiling, depending on your map, you're paying this additional cost of 50 metal and 400 energy, okay? So at the beginning of this map, when we started, we had this node here. We built one, two, three, right off the bat. That's 150 metal and 1200 energy that you just wasted for absolutely no reason. Instead of doing that, you should play some mine and play some technology. Should be the first thing you do, okay? Golden rule number two is don't overexpand your base unless you need to. Essentially, the only reason that you expand your base is because you need more room for more components, okay? So how many times have you seen, seen players do this or done this yourself? When you jump in, you build this foundation, you still don't have technology or mine, okay? And you jump in and you just finish this off. And wait, they'll actually do it out of back racing and they'll just do this. And they'll build one of these. Okay, this piggybacks off of golden rule number one, don't do this, ever. Don't ever do this, okay? This is wasted resources that you could have used building another turbine, building more mines, building more technology. It's just a waste, okay? This is completely unnecessary. Don't ever do it. Golden rule number three, when it is time for you to expand your base, don't use large boxes. Okay, so when we jump in here, you'll look at most new players will build these three by twos. What do I mean by three by two? I mean this. When you go to create an expansion um, of your fort and you drag your struts, this is what you see. In the background, you see the grid. Okay, this is the unit of measurement that we use in the guide to help determine the size of boxes or structures uh, in the game of forts. So as you can see here, with three horizontal and two vertical. Okay. You want to try and stay away from anything that's not a two by two box. And there's a few reasons for this, okay? Squares are very strong. Rectangles are very weak, okay? Not only that, but almost all components will fit into a two by two box. And I'll show you. See this, this uh, battery? <clears throat> it fits in really good right here, right? Fits in very nicely. Even your technologies, horizontal ones fit in two boxes side by side, and your vertical ones will fit in boxes uh, up and down. So it fits very nicely. The other reason that you want to try and stay with a two by two box is because you can only place one component per cross member of a base, right? So if we place this battery here, for example, okay, you'll see that there's plenty of room, but I cannot place another battery next to it. Okay, it just, it, does, it doesn't let you do it. So when you build a base in this shape, which almost every new player does, you're essentially wasting the effective area of your base. You can only put one component on these giant cross members. They're incredibly weak. Just don't do it. You'll see in a lot of bases, they have some janky kind of not square uh, framing. Uh, Vanilla map for, for prime example has this three, uh, three unit 
brace across the top of it. Okay, um, you want to stay away from this. Many new players will just grab this and build a big three by three box. The larger the box, the weaker it is. Okay, so you want to make sure you want to try and avoid that at all costs. Okay, so you'll do what what we call either create a transition box or an adapter plate, and you'll just bring this over like this. And now you've taken a three across brace and turned it into a two. Now everything you build here will be two. Even though this is on an angle, you'll bring it up, and now you have an additional um, two by two boxes here as well. As a side note, there's a few weapons that require um, a box to be two and a half blocks high. So if you grab any normal strut across that size, uh, that's two across, and you grab it and you bring it down to between 51 and 52 metal, this will be approximately um, two and a half boxes. Okay, so you'll want to build uh, boxes that size. So um, flat cannons, uh, shotguns, EMPs, rockets, 20 millimeter cannons, um, cannons, howitzers, and magnum beams will all need um, two and a half high um, boxes. Okay, golden rule number four is making sure to cross brace your base. And I'll explain here. Let's just say, for example, that you're starting, you're starting new, and you do know to build two by two boxes. Okay, so you've under, you've understood that part um, of the game. And so you're building away. Let's just get it down here, right? So you've got this giant, this giant base, and you're building up here. You've got some uh, technology down. And you're building up here, and you've got some turbines. Uh, we need more metal. You've got some turbines. Let's just turn this into back racing. So you get wind. Um, so you've got your turbines, you got your technology down, and you build this this giant base. Let's make sure they even know about the the sizing for the for the weapons. Okay, and we'll build this little jank here. Okay, so they have this giant base. We see how it's wobbling. See how it's tipping and like waving? What I mean by cross bracing is this. Okay? Making an X. Boxes with crosses in them are one of the strongest um, structural shapes in engineering. So building a cross member in your base or cross bracing your whole base uh, adds two things. One, it increases the amount of weight that you can place on top of the base before these bottom struts um, collapse. And it also makes your base much more rigid. Um, a small little perk with it, it also increases your protection against small arms fire. Each brace has a set amount of HP, so just having more braces effectively increases um, the HP per 2x2 two two grid, uh, which, is, which is something you really want to do. Um, number Golden rule number five is don't shoot the gunner at the beginning, okay? Many, many new players do this just as a little bit of harass. As a new player, I highly recommend not doing this. Even even pro players have. There's a very very limited um, limited game plan of why you would do this. But the main reason that new players you don't want to do this is because it takes up your APM. APM is actions per minute, and it's talked about more in the terms and definition section of the guide. Link down below in the description. Head on over there. Okay, so. Instead of firing your gunner like this, okay, you should be using those actions per minute to build more mines, build more technologies, build more turbines, instead of firing, okay? You're better off at the beginning of the map to just grab it, sell it, use the resources you get back from it to build more mines, technologies, weapons, or turbines, okay? Um, golden rule number six is double doors. So let's say we've got our flat cannon sitting up here, comes with a door, a lot of players and a lot of new players will just leave that. Okay, midway through the game when you get what's called an upgrade center, uh, we'll have just one more second here, an upgrade center, that little building there, you can upgrade a regular sniper into an armor piercing sniper, and that sniper can shoot through a single metal door and hit whatever's on the other side. Cannon shells as well will go straight through a singular metal door and blow up whatever's on the other side as well. So you want to make sure to double door your weapons. This is really important. You'll even see um, higher level or higher tier players. They'll even triple door, quadruple door, even quintuple door sometimes in, in situations to make sure that the weapon on the other side can't be attacked. And golden rule number seven is to make sure to hide your doors. Now this is really important. What do I mean by hiding your doors? Making sure that there's some back bracing 
uh, in behind the doors so that opponents can't see whether or not they're opening. So let's say, for example, we've got the triple door there, which is good. All right, the opponent cannot see these doors opening or closing. Okay, and let's just say, for example, you've happened to have the door on the outside. The opponent can see this door. So all you need to do is add a little bit of background bracing here, and now we can't see the door. The reason that this is important is because opponents, good opponents, will sit here on the other side with a sniper and they'll wait for your doors to open just like that and they'll shoot right through and blow up whatever you have on the other side. It happens all the time. We call it door sniping. It's also talked about more in the terms and definitions section of the guide. Make sure to check it out. Okay. Keep in mind, very good players will wait and, and listen for the sound of the door to open like this. That sound. They'll wait to hear that and then they'll fire. Later on in the guide, we have some tips and tricks about uh, gameplay you can do with doors to help try and confuse your opponent. Um, and we'll be going over those in some later videos as well. That does it for this video, you guys. The seven golden rules. Remember that there is a link to the guide in the description. Head on over there. It'll go in a lot more depth than the things we talked about here. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified when the next video is coming up. And if you have any questions or comments regarding this stuff, make sure to post it in the video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If I personally don't know the answer, I will find somebody who does and get back to you right away. Once again, you guys, thank you so much for watching Synergy Gaming TV. I'm your host, Synergy, and we'll catch you guys on the flip side.